Hi, it's me, Joyce. Just talking, just singing, just coming at you. <laughs> as, all, as always, it's a Sunday evening. So uh, the lighting's a little dark. <laughs> I do apologize. Um, but the story is also a little bit dark. And I'd like to shed some light on um, some people's lives, some very young people's lives, people who, who matter. Okay. Um, many years ago, I heard a story about a young girl. Who I, I believe she lived in Sudbury, up north in Ontario. <clears throat> And her mother was divorced from her father. And she hadn't seen her father since she was just a little tyke, you know. She was already in her teens, and her dad was history <laughs> and a mystery. And um, her mom had remarried, which is a very happy occasion, you know. She had a stepdad. Mom's married. Problem is that mom's new spouse didn't want this girl in the house. He wanted her to go back and live with her father in Toronto. So this young girl who had a life, had friends, had school, had a home, was poured onto a bus with her suitcases, with her belongings. And uh, I sure know about that. Not that I was ever homeless, but I know what it's like to leave a familiar place and get on a bus with just your your few belongings, and uh, start all over in a new city. Like I had to when I was 14, when I had to move with my mom and dad and brother to Toronto with 20 boxes of belongings, just the clothes we had, and um, renting all our furniture. So it was it was really hard. So, of course, I'm digressing to that, but it also means that I, I do have a lot of empathy for this story. So this young girl was going to meet her father, who she hasn't met since forever. And he picks her up at the bus station, piles her into the car with her suitcases, then makes a short drive, turns a corner onto a, a street, and she says, whoa, like, we're here already. And he got out of the car, and he took her suitcases and put them on the sidewalk, and asked her to get out of the car, and so she did. It's okay, kid. Have a nice life. He drove away. Here she was in downtown Toronto. Her dad had just abandoned her on the street. Her mother and her new husband didn't want her. She left all her friends, her home. Her belongings, her school behind. And there she stood crying in front of Covenant House. He dropped her off at the youth shelter. Didn't even take her in, just dropped her off. You know, like, like, you know, they used to take little babies in a basket and abandon them at the, the orphanage. That's what happened to her. And when you see kids on the street, they say, ah, get a job, go back to school, go back home. It's not always possible. It's rarely possible. When you see kids on the street, it's not because they just want to be on the street for a lark, because they're rebellious, because they're horrible people, because they're drug addicts. That's not the reason. And if they are taking drugs, let me tell you, and this is the truth, First few days on the street, and I've read this. I was posted in the subway. I read this. The first, the first few days on the street. Okay, you know they're not great. But then, well into a month on the street, you need something. You may not have enough food. You may not have a. You don't have a place to stay. It's unsafe. So when people approach you with something to take the pain away. Sometimes you take it. You don't have money. So sometimes you have to maybe sleep in some stranger's home so you can pay for the drugs, if you know what I mean. So you get abused, get used. Did you know the average age, according to Save the Children, now this was years ago, 
Average age of kids on the street is 11 years old in Chihuahua. Kids can't get help. Kids on the street, kids, I say kids, teenagers on the street cannot get official legal help on the street until they're 16 years of age. So there are a lot of kids, so that means Covenant House too, right? Got to be 16 to get in there. But I still say I want to um, to appeal to people to to give to Covenant House or to Young Street Mission. They have um, an evergreen program, and it's located on Spadina here in Toronto. And they um, they help youth on the street. They've been severely cut back in their funding. All these places. So that's what I'm asking you to do is please, please, please. When you see a kid on the street, don't just walk past them with disdain and disgust. Ah, oh, you drug addict. Or, oh, you know, whatever. Or just walk by. I don't even see you. That awful. Stop and talk to me. I can be helpful. But certainly donate, if you can, to Young Street Mission. I know the people down there, and I know the people at Covenant House. Good people. So as you know, it's uh, Joyce just talking, just singing. <laughs> and I'm in my nice comfy chair here, in my nice comfy home. That's what I'd like other people to have, these young kids to have a place where they can be. Be scabbing up a warm bed and a warm, a warm meal. And a chance to go to school and to study. That's what Covenant House gives them. And Young Street Mission. Yeah. And housing. Okay. So this is a song I love. It's from Carnival. The stage show, Broadway show Carnival. And it's called Mira. And um, just think of that poor kid on the sidewalk with your suitcase. The dad driving off saying, have a nice life, kid. Nice life. Anyway, so here we are. This is uh, Mira. I came on two buses and a train. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Two buses and a train. Would you believe, would you believe that this is the first I've traveled? I come from a town, the kind of town where you live in a house till the house falls down and if it stands up, you stay there. It's funny, but that's the way there. Mm. I come from the town of Mira, beyond the bridges of St. Clair. I guess you've never heard of Mira. It's very small, but still, it's there. They have the very greenest trees and skies as bright as flame. But what I like the best in Mira is everybody knew my name. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that everybody knew my name? A place that's strange is never cozy. A place that's strange is never sweet. I want to have a chair that knows me and walk a street that knows my feet. I'm very far from me now. And there 
there's no turning back I've got to find a place I have to find a place where everything can be the same with places I can go and people I can know where everybody knows my name and you that everybody knew my name so please I, I implore you to please donate to Young Street Mission or Covenant House or there are other shelters that help kids out or or you know volunteer volunteer for the children's aid or or for different youth groups you know and get out there you know we have a lot of problems on the streets have too many people kids young kids and a lot and you know Toronto is um a place where there's a lot of human trafficking and believe me they're not 20 year olds a lot some are a lot of them are you know they are eventually they will reach 20 but a lot of these kids start when they're 10 11 12 13 whatever you're young kids kids who are lost without a place to live people have had to children children babies babies you know who've had to take to the street so they can feel safe so on that note I'll leave you with that number 42 and may that be the answer $42 there you go $4,200 please donate thank you very much for watching Joyce just talking just singing just appealing to your kind nature